Hi, my name is Aaron, and this video is an excerpt from a course that I have up on Udemy.com. Um, if you want to go check it out, there's a link down below, and there, there are a lot more preview videos that you can see if you want to learn about Photopea. I'll also be uploading more here on YouTube, but again, if you want to see all the, that I have, check those out. There's a number of them for free, and if you're interested in taking the full course, send me a message down here and I'll give you a code where you can get it at a much cheaper price. All right, so I'm not gonna hold you up here, so we'll just get right into the video. Hi, in this video, I wanna show you how to do a pixel stretch effect. I've seen this done many times in Photoshop and I wanna do it in PhotoP. Um, as you can see, this is the effect that we are after. I personally think this is really cool and just looks great. Okay, so what I have here is we're going to start with this image here. This is the original image and I got it off of Pexels and I've already silhouetted the image so that should speed things up quite a bit. All right, so the first thing that we are going to do is we need to select those pixels that we're going to stretch. So I'm going to zoom in. You can see this is a layer mask. I mean, this is uh, an image and it has a and it has a, a a raster mask. And I'm gonna disable that so you can see there's the original image. All right. So I'm gonna enable that raster mask. So what we need to do is make the selection. Make sure you are on the layer and on the image, not the the raster mask. All right. So basically, what we're gonna do is we're gonna select a strip of colors. A line of colors and then stretch them out all right so the image that I've chosen is very colorful and I can use it to move that you know move across the image so make sure if you're doing something original try to find something colorful it'll make it a, a bit more interesting all right so I'm gonna come over first I'm gonna zoom in a little then I'm gonna come over here to my rectangle rectangle select tool and I'm gonna drag down in this area right here because you can see I can get a nice band of color coming through you know his mouth his teeth and down and down here okay so well, actually I'm gonna skip the teeth I'm gonna go maybe here there's a little bit of red and green in there in his hat and I'm gonna come down here all right and you can see that little box next to my cursor is telling me how wide there's the the width and the height of this pixel box of the selection that I'm making and I'm gonna drag inward and try to get it between one and six pixels or one and five pixels if I can get one that would be awesome I don't think I can't I got one release alright so I've made the selection you just can't see it so what I need to do is I'm gonna duplicate this layer I'm gonna copy and paste that so but I'm gonna do this by going command J and you see in my layers panel that duplicated. If I'm, a, if I'm on a PC, that will probably be Control J. So I'm going to turn that off, and you can see there's just this little strip right here. All right. So from that strip, I can stretch this out. But if I turn this on, well, actually, I'm going to stretch it out. And then we're going to do it again because that only came down to here. And I also want to get his foot in here. So I want to get across this area here. So I'm going to stretch the first one out. So I'm going to come back to this layer where I copied it. Although it has this layer mask, I'm going to right click and delete raster mask right here. So we don't need that. Turn that off. Now I'm going to go edit transform. Edit. Well, I'm going to go with free transform. Command T or sorry, control T. All right. Now I'm going to drag this out and I get this little weird box that comes off the first time. I don't know what that is. So I'm going to do it a second time. And you can see I got this perfect bit of line. This perfect strip of color. Okay, so I'm going to stop there and I'll fix that when I go to um when I zoom out and I can stretch it all the way to the end. But for now, I'm just going to check the confirm button. Now I'm going to come back to this guy, drag him to the top. And I'm going to try to get this next strip to come down through his foot and connect to there. So I'm going to, I'm on the rectangle select tool. And 
I'm going to come right up from the tip of his toe and connect it to there. I'm at three pixels wide. Let's see if I can get one. Oh, I had one. Got it. One. Release. It'll be, if you get longer, you're going to see there'll be some slight variation. But if you can get one pixel, uh, that would be the best. All right. So again, rather than do the command J again, this time I'm going to show you another way. Okay. So make sure you're on the image on the, you know, of the, with the guy, I'm going to, I'm going to label that guy and make sure you're on the image, not the layer mask. And I'm going to go edit copy. And then I'm going to make a new layer and then I'm going to go edit paste. All right. So now we have that second layer so I'm gonna turn everything off except the visibility of each of those except for this this second stripe layer alright so I'm gonna zoom out just a little bit so I can see the other one one I spread out but I'm going to stretch this out so edit free transform or control T and then I'm gonna click drag and I get that first little box and then I'm gonna you see I get the horizontal double-headed arrow and I can drag this out and this one I'm gonna take all the way to the end alright I'm gonna release and I'm gonna hit that confirm mark or hit the enter key now I'm gonna turn the other one on and we got it we have to stretch that out a little bit more alright so I'm gonna select it so I'm gonna select it and I'm gonna go control T and stretch that out till we get to the end of our document. Okay, so from here, I'll hit the accept mark. I'm gonna turn the guy back on, put him on top and see what this looks like. Okay, that looks pretty good. Actually, I'm gonna stretch that all the way over. I'm gonna go control T and stretch this all the way over till it gets to this knee. I can always change my mind and change it up. And I'm going to hit the enter key. All right, so now we have both of these. I'm going to merge them. I have selected both layers. I clicked on the layer two, hold the shift key, select layer one, and I'm going to right click and merge layers. All right, now what we need to do is, is warp it. All right, so that the fun part. I'm going to zoom out a little bit with this so I have some space to work. So I'm going to go Edit, Transform, or Command-T. And now you see we have these bounding boxes. But up here you see we have this button right here that says Warp. I'm going to click on that. And you see I instantly got these little buttons in the middle and these up here. All right, so here is how we're going to warp it. So I'm going to click on this little box right here and drag upward and I'm gonna drag that up to maybe past the top here and I'm just trying to keep it in a straight line so I don't get any white spaces on the other side and you see this long line right here that's actually a handle and as I bend that handle let's see let's find something here so if I this is imagine this is that line and this is the handle as I bend this handle it influences the shape of that warp alright so if I bring it up here it's gonna make a curve up like that I drag it down this way it's gonna make it dip alright so I'm gonna drag it down and if I go too far far it's gonna drag all the way down you know down too far so I want I don't want that dip here so I'm gonna drag it upward in that straight line and then it'll come over and sweep up okay you see there is a little bit of a dip here but you can see there's that line I can also click on these boxes right here and move those around or these little anchor points alright so I'm gonna click and drag on this one drag it down past the edge of the page and then I'm going to drag this handle inward so it sweeps in much in the same way as the the one up top okay so it looks like he swept out and across alright so now I'm gonna hit the accept mark I like that we got a couple more things that we're gonna do here one I need to get rid of this right here alright I think I'm still wait there we go it accepted it so I'm gonna zoom in and now I'm gonna label this I'm gonna relabel this layer uh, sweep 
All right. And I need to get rid of this area right here. I want to make a layer mask on my sweep layer. So I'm going to click on that. And in order to make sure I have black and white, I'm just going to click on that little D button to get the default colors. And then I'm going to click on the arrows to swap the colors. Now black is on top. And I'm going to click right here on his heel. Hold my finger on the button. Again, I'm on the sweep layer, on the layer mask, or on the raster mask. And I'm going to click hold, and I'm going to add the shift key to make sure it's a straight line and drag straight across. All right, so that's how I can get that. Actually, I'm going to do that again. My brush has a soft edge. I want this to have a nice, hard, crisp edge. So I'm going to do that again now. I'm going to click, add the shift key, and drag straight across. And now this other part. I can take out make sure I get all of that again since this is browser based this brush is a little floaty okay now I have everything all right so I'm gonna zoom out now I want to add a drop shadow to this figure but the problem I'm going to have with this, if I add a drop shadow, it's going to show up on both the right and left side or, you know, in these areas here. So rather than just make a normal drop shadow, I am going to duplicate this layer with the guy. I'm going to click on it. I'm going to right click and hit duplicate layer. In this one, I'm going to apply the raster mask. So now I only have the image of that guy this time I'm gonna to go to image and this is a destructive but I it, it's not so such a big deal because it is a um, a copy so here I'm gonna to go to exposure and I'm gonna drag it all the way to black all right it's now black I'm gonna hit OK and now I'm gonna add a Gaussian blur so now I'm going to go to filter blur Gaussian blur and I get that, and I'm just going to give it a nice shadow. Because, again, the reason I'm doing this rather than just adding a drop shadow is because I want it to have a... Um, I don't want it to appear on the background. This way, it feels like the sweeping uh, color thingy is away from the background. I'm going to hit OK. Now I'm going to turn everything back on. OK, now I'm going to move the guy on top. And you see how we have that shadow across here, but it's here. But what I want to do now is click on that layer with the guy, and I'm going to add a layer mask. Again, you could just erase it if that's e an easier way for you to work, but I prefer to do it non-destructively as much as I can in case I screw something up. I can always flatten it or, you know, rasterize the layer. Okay, so I'm going to type B as in boy to get my brush. Um, actually, I can I can see now it has a nice hard edge. I'm going to drop it down to the middle. I'm going to increase the size a little bit, and that looks good. Okay, so now I need to paint with black, and it's already, my brush is already on black. And I'm just going to wipe away this shadow that's on the side that is not touching that sweep. Okay, I left, there's a little bit across the top of his head. That's okay. Well, actually, I guess I should probably get rid of it. Okay, that looks good to me. Make, let me make sure I got all of that. No, I didn't get all of that. <laughs> all right, I think that's everything. All right, so we have one thing left to do, and that is to put a nice background. So let me reposition this. And I'm going to make a new new blank layer down here at the bottom click I'm gonna drag that to the back and I'm gonna double click and call this background and I want this to be a nice blue or any other color that you see in this image so I'm gonna use this blue in his jacket and I want a really light color so I'm gonna click on the eyedropper tool and I'm gonna select right here and you know because it looks like that's a nice color and I'm using the color in his jacket just because I know it's gonna match it's gonna be a repetitive color from within the image and then I can come over here to my tools panel and choose the paint bucket tool if you don't see it if you see the gradient tool it's nested there so just click 
on that and then choose the paint bucket. And I've already selected the color. You can see there's the color right here, although it's a little dark, but let's see. I'm just going to click here in the background layer and select it here and see what happens. Okay, so I can zoom out. I think I'd like this to be a little bit lighter, so I'm going to edit this real quick. I'm going to double click on the color chip and you can see here's the color here. I'm just going to move it a little towards the light and then I'm going to hit OK. And now I'm going to click on that paint bucket again. And nah, I still want it lighter. I'm going to click again, closer to the light. Click again, and boom. All right. And I think I like that. I just hit Command-0 to zoom in to full screen, and I'm happy with this. So that is how you do the pixel stretch effect in Photopea.